Today we're going to talk about St. John Chrysostom, who was the Bishop of Constantinople at the end of the 4th century. Chrysostom was one of the great mystagogical preachers in the church, and in particular, he provides us with a great mystagogy of marriage. Now, if you're wondering what the heck is mystagogy, allow me to explain. It's a 25 cent word that essentially means the doctrine of the mysteries. So, just as biology studies living organisms, anthropology studies man, mystagogy studies the mysteries of Christ. More specifically, mystagogy refers to the teaching of the mysteries of Christ to newly baptized believers, which generally lasts from Easter to Pentecost. And at its heart, mystagogy is all about promise and fulfillment in sacramental terms. It's an unveiling of the relationship between the Old and New Testaments and the sacramental rites of the church, showing their connection through Jesus Christ. Let me give you a quick example. To keep the angel of death from killing the firstborn at the first Passover back in Exodus chapter 12, the Israelites had to kill an unblemished lamb, spread its blood on the doorpost, and eat it. The New Testament reveals that Jesus is the true Lamb of God, whose blood was shed to deliver us from sin and death, and we consume Him in the Eucharist. So, mystagogical catechesis explains how Jesus connects the Mass that we celebrate with the Passover liturgy of the Israelites. And while it applies to all the sacraments, Chrysostom gives us a mystagogy of marriage. In fact, he spoke so eloquently about this and so many other topics that he's not known to history by his real name, but as Chrysostomos, which is Greek for golden-tongued. Now, the heart of John's mystagogical view of marriage is the fact that the union between a man and a woman is meant by God to be an image or an icon of the Trinitarian life. Learn the power of the type, he says, so that you may learn the strength of the truth. Now, unlike many of his 4th century contemporaries, who were a bit suspicious of marriage, Chrysostom was bent on glorifying the sacrament. This wasn't such a popular notion, because out of a city of a quarter of a million, Chrysostom's own Antioch boasted 3,000 celibate women, and the club scene just was not happening. A whole lot of people, women and men, just didn't understand how they could pursue both holiness and a spouse. Which is a little bit ironic, because my wife would tell you that being married to me provides ample opportunity for her growth and sanctity. And John would agree. Using thoroughly mystagogical language, he called it a sacrament, a mystery, a model of the Church of Jesus Christ. Of course, his theology of marriage is lifted right from the pages of the Bible. In the letter to the Ephesians, St. Paul expresses the same truth when he says, the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is a profound one, he says, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the Church. Like Paul before him, St. John Chrysostom is well aware of the fact that marriage is a dominant theme all the way throughout Scripture. It starts with the union of Adam and Eve. It continues through the prophets to the Old Testament and on to the marriage supper of the Lamb at the end of the Bible in Revelation. In all those biblical examples and more, marriage is constantly used as a picture or an icon of the relationship of God with His people. That's especially clear in places like Hosea and Ezekiel and Song of Songs, elsewhere as well. Likewise, the nuptial foreshadowing in the Old Testament finds its fulfillment in the sacrament of the New Covenant. But what makes marriage a truly sacred mystery, St. John says, is that it leads us into a deeper mystery of the Trinity. Divine Revelation teaches us that the Trinity is essentially a communion of persons. As Blessed John Paul II stated, God in His deepest mystery is not a solitude, but a family, because He has within Himself fatherhood, sonship, and the essence of the family, which is love. Moreover, the divine family of God relates to each other through self-gift. So, the Father gives of Himself completely to the Son, the Son gives of Himself completely back to the Father, and from their union, this love communion, proceeds a third person, the Holy Spirit. Well, in a similar way, St. John Chrysostom taught that the husband gives of himself completely to his wife, the wife gives of herself completely back to her husband, and from this union of love, this complete self-donation comes a third person. The child, says Chrysostom, is a bridge connecting mother to father, so the three become one flesh, and here the bridge is formed from the substance of each. Almost 1,700 years later, Pope Benedict XVI echoed Chrysostom when he said, Created in the image of God, the human family thus stands as an icon of the Trinity because of interpersonal love as well as its mission to procreate life. So there you have it, the mystagogy of marriage from St. John Chrysostom. And what I just told you comes right out of our latest Journey Through Scripture series, The Bible and the Church Fathers. So if you're interested in more what the fathers have to teach us, then they have a lot to teach us. 
go to journeythroughscripture.com and check out our series of parish-based Bible studies. And don't forget to like us on Facebook.